TV. JMU football's historic win in the Sun Belt. And we take a deep dive into campus-wide safety rumors. Plus, we are highlighting our first person in politics of the season. Then, these students open shop here on campus. All this and more on Breeze TV. Live from the Allison B. Parker Studio in the School of Media Arts and Design at James Madison University, this is Breeze TV. Welcome back to Breeze TV. I'm Maggie Rickerby. And I'm Sam Game. To start off our show today, our reporter Colby Reese is live at Bridgeforth Stadium to give us the rundown on JMU football. Colby? Thanks, Maggie. I'm live outside of Bridgeforth Stadium, where it's very cold and rainy, as it will be at the 1.30 p.m. kickoff tomorrow. Um, Gov Governor Glenn Youngkin has announced a state of emergency due to the effects of Hurricane Ian, which is affecting the area here. That has prompted a tweet from JMU Athletics, who said they did not expect any changes from the game at this time. It'll be JMU's first sold out game of the year as it is family weekend with plenty of family and friends coming to the Berg to watch JMU. Texas State is the opponent. They're currently two and two and coming off a big win against Houston Baptist last week. They look to open their Sun Belt play with a upset win on the road against the Dukes. On to the Duke side of things. The Dukes received votes in both the AP Top 25 poll and the USA Today Sports AFCA Coaches poll. JMU remains one of the 21 unbeaten teams in college football. Additionally, JMU and Coastal Carolina are the only two Sun Belt teams still yet to lose. With so much of the season left and plenty of big tests ahead, head coach Kirk Sinetti talked about the key things his team has done in order to compete at this high level. Trust the process, which we, we do, and... Uh make the most out of every day but you got to have an edge because the the difference in athletics between teams is like inches inches and the team that shows up hungry ready to go and is on point with execution is the team that prevails because for the most part in college football 98 percent of the teams can can beat anybody or lose to anybody Despite being bowl ineligible and not truly being able to compete for anything this season, JMU will continue to look to impress many around the country and have an historic first season in the FBS. One game in particular was the game against the Appalachian State Mountaineers, which JMU came back to improve their record to 3-0. Our uh, senior anchor, Joshua Dixon, helped us relive the big win. A game that will go down in history as the Dukes shocked the Rock. Yeah! Down 28 to three in the first ever Sun Belt game. Many had already counted them out. Um, it shows that we can fight adversity in a dogfight, you know. Come, go, from coming down from 28-3, we can hold our composure and we can play to the whistle, play to zero. A message delivered by the head coach in this previous week started to ring true for this team. Talk about a quote of Gandhi's about uh, an indomitable will and what is indomitable, where a will that would never be subdued or defeated, and resiliency, which is overcoming the unexpected. Staring down a massive deficit against a great team in a hostile environment. Getting to halftime knowing that it's a 0-0 game, and uh, we, we really showed our resilience today and, and showed what, what we're made of. The team battled back. Touchdown, JMU. Calling their way to 29 unanswered points and a second-half shutout. We was always ready to come and win the game. Like the defense, we like to win the game. We like to have the game in our hands. So we was just always ready. And for the offense, the success came from a simple adjustment. And our guys had fun. You know, I just, in the second half, I just kept walking down to the offense. And I said, you having fun? Having fun? You having fun? Let's have some fun. After beating what many would consider to be the top dog in the Sun Belt. I done cried three times already because... It took a lot to get here and, and be in this moment and playing this type of game. And I'm just so grateful. Like, thank, thank the Lord, thank all my teammates, all my coaches, and I'm just really appreciative of them. The team will now look to carry this momentum from a historic win 
to a historic season. You know, it, it, it means a great deal to our program, to our coaches, our fans, our players, everybody. This is Joshua Dixon reporting on the field for Breeze TV. That's all I have from a soon-to-be-packed Big Bridge Fourth Stadium. Back to you all in the studio. Just in time for the Sun Belt opener, Family Weekend is in full swing. JMU has, has had an impact on the local economy, but businesses downtown are preparing to see an increase due to the influx of parents. Our executive producer, Kayla Brown, explores what you and your family can do this weekend, rain or shine. Hotels have been booked for months, and the cars are all packed up. Family Weekend is finally here. In this week's Family Weekend Supplement by The Breeze, a poll revealed that 2.35 out of every five respondents said their families would be attending, and 2.8 of those scored tickets for this weekend's game. We're going to go to some tailgates, go out to dinner, just spend time together. We're going to go to the football game and then go out to eat with my sweet mate's families. Uh, well, we were going to go to the game, but the ticket sold out too fast, so now we got to figure out something else to do. For families who weren't so lucky, the downtown scene has plenty to offer. The Outpost, a family-run business, will be on campus Saturday for their fan zone event. With a new second location on Main Street, the owner of the Outpost said that even though Parents Weekend is very busy, it's a time where her family can work together to make the business run smoothly. It's nice having the second location because I do think that will help alleviate a little bit of pressure. The new location will also be printing parent t-shirts upon request. Just in time for Parents Weekend. Several other businesses in Harrisonburg are rooted in their families. Heartworn Vintage, located in the Agora Marketplace, is a vintage store run by mother and daughter. She came to me actually and said about five years ago, hey mom, why don't we open up a vintage store together? So that just kind of pulled on my heartstrings and we decided to make a go of it. The duo hopes the relics from their store can connect parents to their dukes. I guess the biggest thing is they come in here and they have memories. They, they see the things that they grew up with. Alongside downtown, JMU will be offering events for families throughout Sunday. Whatever is on your agenda for Family Weekend, enjoy it. Reporting for Breeze TV, I'm Kayla Brown. For more ideas on what to do this weekend, you can stop by the Hardesty Higgins Visitor Center or go to visit HarrisonburgVA.com. Coming up on Breeze TV. We're helping Duke stay safe on campus. And we learn how to make the road to graduation easier. Plus, a new local leader steps into the school board. Stay tuned. Head to Bojangles for a Chicken Supremes combo with your choice of fixin', a made-from-scratch buttermilk biscuit, and a drink. Bojangles, it's bow time. Prescription drug pricing points to corporate mountain. Freedom of the press is about your right to know. And Clark Shear athleticism. It's about your right to be informed. Today, no. there are real threats to press freedom. Reaching residential areas. And your right to know about the world around us. We must protect our right to know, no matter what kind of news is important to you. Before it's too late, understand the threats. Protectpressfreedom.org. This is Breeze TV. Welcome back to Breeze TV. Several rumors have been spread on campus about safety issues. Our news director, Zoe Mowry, investigated these rumors and how to stay safe on campus. Last two weeks, JMU's social media pages have been plagued with anxiety and fear as students had to grapple with rumors ranging from organized sex trafficking rings to air tagging. I don't feel safe. It feels like on campus is very much the like target. But it's kind of like a little more scary now. To relieve some of the stress on students, JMU's police chief Anthony Matos shut down these rumors. Uh, we haven't seen any of what is being reported on social media. So this is a social media I don't say myth. Matos also sent out an email last week that explained to students how they can report suspicious activity on the LiveSafe app and that the JMU administration remains committed to the safety and security of every member of this community. And the email just really goes to show how people are like 
overanalyzing a situation that wasn't needed to be overanalyzed. But some students had a different reaction. All this talk from JMU that's saying like, oh, like these are rumors, like you're getting caught up in like the social media rumors aspect of it. But then there's what I'm seeing, what's freaking me out personally. And I think it's probably a combination of the two. Like there is really stuff that's happening. There are people that are obviously going to like exaggerate what's going on. Despite disagreement between some administration and students, they all want one thing for this campus to remain as safe as possible. Never walk alone, and if you feel uncomfortable or if anything is like weird, definitely like don't hesitate to call like 911. Safety is a pri should be a priority for every one of our students. I feel like it's better to be safe than sorry, so I might as well be safe. I like personally been kind of like staying on my toes and like looking around and like scanning my surroundings which I've never really like had to do before and it is uncomfortable and not fun to have to do whatsoever especially in a place where I've always felt so safe. Reporting for Breeze TV, I'm Zoe Mowry. Our assistance news director Moses Harris is live in studio with Paul Mabry to talk about JMU's retention gap. Moses? Thank you, Sam and Maggie. I'm here today with the QP director at James Madison University, Paul Mabry. So, how are you doing today? Doing very well, thank you. How are you doing? I'm doing great. So, how long have you been involved with the Quality Enhancer Program here at JMU? So, I've been involved in a little bit over a year now. Mm -hmm. um, started not this most recent summer, but the summer before that uh, as the director of our Quality Enhancement Plan. So what can you tell me that it does here at James U, JMU? So the, the Quality Enhancement Plan, or QEP for short, is an important part of James Madison's reaccreditation efforts. And so if you recall, um, I don't, you've been here for a couple of years, um, Ethical Reasoning in Action, do you remember that? Yes. Okay, so that was the last QEP. That was something that was done for the last 10 years or so as part of that. Uh, and so this QEP moving forward uh, will focus on um, identifying and closing equity-based retention gaps here at JMU and trying to sort of develop and implement a early student success system uh, that can really help students uh, accomplish and meet their goals and be successful here and beyond JMU. So those retention gaps where you guys are really focusing on to help students get more like abilities or activities to do in, better to increase their chances of graduating? Yeah, exactly. So to help them, so retention, the way that we describe it here at JMU and in this uh, quality enhancement plan mm -hmm. is understood as what is the percentage of an incoming class for let's say the fall 2022 everyone who came in what is the percentage of those students who continue on to JMU and stay here at JMU the second year mm -hmm. so that's retention and how will this make it easier on student life as a whole the hope is um, that if we're able to remove some of these barriers that we've identified in our research if we can make the jam you know the JMU experience a um, a better experience in terms of students feel valued. All right. Thank you, Paul, maybe for coming. And back to you, Sam and Maggie. Thank you, Moses. In a meeting that lasted only five minutes, Thomas Dominoski was appointed to the Harrisonburg City Council. Out of the three applicants, Dominoski won in a three to one vote with Obi Hill abstaining due to a conflict of interest. The position was vacant due to former member Nick Swang accepting a position in Idaho. Dominoski's law background, as well as his previous service as interim board member in 2015, helped secure the position. As the climate within K-12 schools is constantly changing, he hopes to uplift parents' voices. There are a lot of difficult decisions that the school board makes and that we'll, they will continue to have to make. And not everyone will be happy, but everyone should feel listened to which is different than being listened to. They should both be listened to, but they should also experience that they actually were listened to. He will serve as interim until December 2023, following a special election for the seat in November of next year. He will have the opportunity to then serve a full term if the community sees fit. When we return on Breeze TV, our political correspondent stocks us up on the latest in politics. And we take a look at a local school board candidate. Plus, a new vote goes against Youngkin's latest school board policy. Then, the latest news on the crisis in Ukraine. All this and more on Breeze TV Politics. Bojangles, Cajun filet biscuit. For breakfast, lunch, or dinner. 
Nothing compares to our signature Cajun Spice Chicken Breast Filet on a made-from-scratch buttermilk biscuit. Breakfast so good, we serve it all day. Get the best chicken biscuit. The one, the only Cajun Filet Biscuit. For a limited time, get two Cajun Filet Biscuits for just $5. Bojangles, it's bow time. The one. The only. Bojangles Cajun Filet Biscuit. Nothing compares to our signature Cajun Spice Chicken Breast Filet on a made-from-scratch buttermilk biscuit. Bojangles Cajun Filet Biscuit is so good, we serve it all day. For a limited time, get two Cajun Filet Biscuits for just $5. Bojangles, it's bow time. Tailgating is a song heard across campuses, parking lots, and open fields. They say this song can be heard elsewhere, and perhaps this is true. But it is nowhere near as bright, nowhere near as loud, nowhere near as triumphant as it is right here. Tailgating may not have been born here, but here is where tailgaters are born. Head to Bojangles for a Chicken Supremes combo with your choice of fixin', a made-from-scratch buttermilk biscuit, and a drink. Bojangles, it's bow time. Every year, 4.5 million young adults between the ages of 18 and 24 visit the ER. It's every parent's nightmare. Emergency gives you all the tools you need to quickly and effectively manage your family's emergency. Emergency provides instant access to vital resources, customized to your student's campus and local community, digital consent form, and built-in urgent alert button. Emergency gives you peace of mind when you need it most. Download your Emergency app now. This is Breeze TV. Good afternoon, JMU. I'm Regine Aranazari, and this is Breeze TV Politics. Over the course of the next few weeks, our politics team will be speaking to all 12 candidates on Harrisonburg's 2022 ballot until Election Day. This week, we will be highlighting school board candidate Emma Phillips. With three seats up for grabs in November, Emma Phillips is looking to take over Obie Hill's spot on the Harrisonburg City School Board while running with current members Andy Cohen and Kristen Laughlin. She says the duo's values align with her own. Um, I've been really pleased with all of the decisions that they've made. They've been really good team players along the way, and I'm thrilled to be joining them. Phillips has been a part of the Harrisonburg community for years and says helping neighbors or volunteering inside schools is the best way to serve. The main focus on her campaign is the inclusion of all students inside the classroom. There is a gap in our STEM classes, a racial gap and a gender gap, and it's important that we address those inequities so that every student who's coming out of Harrisonburg City Schools has the skills that come along with that STEM education. Opinions from the community is something Phillips says is important to highlight, including that of the temporary population JMU brings. I know school board isn't always the most glamorous uh, election. It doesn't always get all of the attention that some of the other races do, but the policies that shape our schools help shape our overall community, and that makes Harrisonburg the place that it is. Reporting for Breeze TV, I'm Zoe Mallory. Our Breeze TV politics team will continue to keep you updated on the latest about the candidates. On Monday, the Rockingham County School Board voted 3-1 to one against a policy that would require schools to notify parents of students who want to be referred to by different names and pronouns. The policy was introduced by school board member Matt Cross back in May, and this news comes as public comment opens for the new Virginia Department of Education guidelines under the Youngkin administration that advise schools to notify parents of such changes. On Tuesday, more than 1,000 Virginia students walked out of school in protest of the guidelines, citing discrimination against LGBTQ members. In other news, last week, Russian President Vladimir Putin warned that the Kremlin will not hesitate to use nuclear weapons in his war with Ukraine should the West try to reclaim the Eastern Front. Ukraine's deputy intelligence chief warned that the risk of nuclear warfare is, quote, very high. The U.S. Embassy in Moscow is urging U.S. citizens not to travel to Russia and that residing U.S. citizens flee immediately. 
This comes a week after Putin ordered Russia's first war mobilization since World War II. And the security alert said, quote, Russia may refuse to acknowledge dual nationals' U.S. citizenship, deny their access to U.S. consular assistance, prevent their departure from Russia, and conscript dual nationals for military service. That's all for politics. Sam and Maggie, back to you. Thanks, Regine. When we come back... Friday night, lights are kicking off at a local high school. And we learn that it takes a village to make a difference in our community. Bojangles. Plus, creative students sell their products on campus. We're in the final stretch on Breeze TV. Bojangles, Cajun filet biscuit. For breakfast, lunch, or dinner. Nothing compares to our signature Cajun Spice Chicken Breast Filet on a made-from-scratch buttermilk biscuit. Breakfast so good, we serve it all day. Get the best chicken biscuit. The one, the only Cajun Filet Biscuit. For a limited time, get two Cajun Filet Biscuits for just $5. Bojangles, it's bow time. The one. The only. Bojangles, Cajun Filet Biscuit. Nothing compares to our signature Cajun Spice Chicken Breast Filet on a made-from-scratch buttermilk biscuit. Bojangles Cajun Filet Biscuit is so good, we serve it all day. For a limited time, get two Cajun Filet Biscuits for just $5. Bojangles, it's bow time. Tailgating is a song heard across campuses, parking lots, and open fields. They say this song can be heard elsewhere, and perhaps this is true. But it is nowhere near as bright, nowhere near as loud, nowhere near as triumphant as it is right here. Tailgating may not have been born here, but here is where tailgaters are born. Head to Bojangles for a Chicken Supremes combo with your choice of fixin', a made-from-scratch buttermilk biscuit, and a drink. Bojangles, it's bow time. Prescription drug pricing points to corporate mountain. Freedom of the press is about your right to know. And Clark Shear athleticism. It's about your right to be informed. Today, no. there are real threats to press freedom. It's reaching residential areas. And your right to know about the world around us. We must protect our right to know, no matter what kind of news is important That's to you. Question. Before it's too late, understand the threats protectpressfreedom.org. This is Breeze TV. Welcome back to Breeze TV. While the Dukes take on Texas State this week, a younger class of football players prepare for the heat of their season. Turner Ashby High School is off to a strong start in football this season, enjoying a bye week off after a 3-2 start. Next Friday, the Knights kick off Valley Region play against Broadway in what should be an intense and competitive matchup. It's a Valley District opponent, and every single game in the Valley is a is a rivalry game. It's um, it's always a big game. It's a small district, so everybody knows each other. Um, so it, it'll be a big game. They're all big games from here on out. You know, both teams play hard. Both teams play hard. I think it just comes down to who executes. Um, we both are pretty big. Um, we fly around to the ball. Both teams do. So it, it'll just come down to who executes. The two will begin competition for the Valley Region title along with the Harrisonburg, Spotswood, and Rockbridge County High. Turner Ashby's strong start this season can be credited to their surging offense, scoring the second most points per game in the region. JMU men's soccer was back home on Wednesday night to take on George Washington in a non-conference matchup. After an even first half, George Washington kicked off the second half, scoring mm. in the first minute. That momentum continued as they sealed the game with goals in the 69th and 80th minute. JMU had a chance for a late consolation goal from the penalty spot, but saw it saved. George Washington saw the game out for a 3-0 win. The Dukes will be back in action on Saturday at Centura Park to take on Kentucky as they look to get their first win in Sunbelt play. Purple Constitution books are making their way around campus. 
Designed by two JMU alumni, the book includes a copy of the Constitution and other staple U.S. documents. The JMU Center for Civic Engagement, or JMU Civic, gave out the books at a Constitution Day lecture event. Dr. David Kirkpatrick, the interim executive director of JMU Civic, said, quote, As an institution named after the father of the Constitution, it makes sense that students have an accessible copy of the document. Something so central to our democracy that we, we can uh, seek to advance, that we can put in students' hands, that is, again, centering values that we should all hold dear, things like um, you know, restrictions on the government, things like free speech, things like religious freedom. Um, so I think especially in this time when there's heightened political difference and heightened sense of what divides us to put forward something that, that brings us together. JMU Civic has handed out 2,000 free Purple Constitutions to students and faculty with plans to give out more in the spring. The books are free of charge and are available with limited supply at the Center of Civic Engagement. Due to an increased demand, an update on JMU Civic's Instagram said that more Purple Constitutions are on the way. One group is coming together to help refugees. Village to Village is a nonprofit organization that helps foreign countries in need. Their goal is to strengthen communities and form lasting bonds with refugees. We just really appreciate the community and the community we live in that is so welcoming to refugees. And we really can't do what we do without the community coming around us and supporting the program. Village to Village accepts gently used donations year round, such as pots, pans, clothes, linens, and other daily necessities. They also accept financial contributions. This year, their Christmas program has extended from 20 families to about 150 families. The organization is working to provide coats, gloves, and hats for these families, as well as toys for the children. For more information on Village to Village, head to hopeforvillages.org. Student-run businesses are growing on college campuses, with an established company soon making its way to the Berg. Student Aid is a program connecting student entrepreneurs to the support of their campus community. All of this beginning at Elon University in 2019. Founded by Lindsay Reith, our creator, as a way for students to branch out and have a voice in creating content, um, whether it's clothing, apparel, whatever it is. Along with the many managers in the organization, the collaboration with sellers is an important aspect. While the creators get to keep 100% of their profit, the opportunity that Student Made offers them is worth so much more. Everybody has to start somewhere, so I think this is a really good starting point for students. So something that's really great is that they have a lot of um, freedom as to how they want to promote their business. They act obviously as like the fuel to this big engine that is Student Made. With 11 other Student Made locations around the country, a feeling that many students can relate to at JMU is what they hope will make this student made so special. This is the only student made here in Virginia and so I think that's something that speaks for itself a little bit. What I really like about JMU's community is that um, you know it's everyone's wearing their school. I feel like at other schools you don't see um, you don't see them really wearing you know their JMU emblem every day. JMU has such a positive campus that supports each other so much more than I've seen on a lot of other campuses. While the road has been a long one, the group is determined to keep their success going. I'm really proud of our team, especially with us being all women. I think it's so rare to see a woman-run business, especially in college, and all of us being so young and being able to accomplish so much. So I'm really proud of us. With the official launch date set for October 17th, the organization has one simple message for the JMU community. Shop student made! <laughs> Reporting for Breeze TV, this is Colby Reese. Hey, before we go, Sam, did you hear about Lizzo playing James Madison's flute? Yes, I did, but did you know that another JMU professor actually played the flute already? So she wasn't the first one in however many years. Wow. Isn't that crazy? Also, I want to, before we leave, I just want to give a shout out to Ashlyn Albert. It's her birthday today. She so. is our teleprompter today. Great job. Doing amazing. Yeah. And I think that was a pretty great show, Sam, your first time anchoring. Yeah. It was really amazing. I'm so proud of you. <laughs> yeah, well, that's all we have for today. Yep, see you next time, same time, same place on Breeze TV.